Hello, uh, so today we will learn that how to create a serverless dashboard that we can visualize and analyze the Twitter data that in, a re in the uh, real time so that we can collect Twitter data by using a REST API and also we can perform a, a very simple sentiment analysis um, uh, by using AWS. Uh, so first, we will still using uh, we are still use the Learner Lab from AWS Academy. So uh, let's start the lab. And also, once the lab is started, and we can go to AWS console, and uh, the service function that uh, is created by using the Lambda function on AWS. So uh, once the the lab is available, it's ready, and let's go to the uh, AWS console. All right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let's open the console. Um, and I'm going to search Lambda. So, so that Lambda function, uh, where uh, AWS will run the code to, uh, based on the configurations that we set up. So we don't need to worry about servers. Uh, so let's create our first uh, Lambda function uh, for this one, let's call it Collect Tweets. And we are using the Python. And uh, for the roles, because we are using the Learner Lab, so let's use uh, the lab role that created. And let's create this function. And then we need to uh, provide the code. So the codes are provided on my GitHub. So we need the connectedness.zip file. And also later, we also need the sentiment analysis. So let's go to this GitHub. And let's download the first zip code, which is connecting tweets. Uh, let's also download the second one, which is performing the sentiment analysis. Uh, we will use both uh, in our Lambda functions. So for the first function, we will use the connect tweets. So let's upload the zip file, and that is a tweet that a connect tweet zip file, and we say save it. And uh, it is a very simple function, and you can see here uh, we are using the REST API, and so we define lambda function. We will take the variable that from the user by using the uh, the parameter uh, environment, environment parameter, and we just simply use um, the REST API to collect tweets. Uh, so once we have the tweet that we, uh, based on the Q parameter and also geo code, if that tweet has been already been collected, we will upload, we will update the favorite count. If that tweet is a new tweet, then we will just simply insert that into our database. Uh, so the function is uh, um, pretty simple. And in the meanwhile, let's go to the configuration. So we need to do some um, editing here. So first, let's say we want the memory to be 500 megabyte. And also this is 1000 and the timeout is one minute. And the reason we need to do that is because we are collecting like around 100 trees. So we want to give it more resources and we leave everything as a default. And then we need to give some um, um, environment variables. So those are the variables that uh, we cannot keep that in the Python code for secret reasons. Uh, so those will include in the uh, Twitter API key, Twitter API secrets, and also the connection to our MongoDB database. Um, and also the parameter that we need to connect to is like the geocode parameter and also queue parameters. So let's say API key. And for the value, so uh, we, uh, you need to have a Twitter API um, to connect tweets. And for our lab, so we just simply copy uh, the API from Canvas. Uh, we also need API secret. Um, we also need to copy the secret. Okay. Okay, so those are the uh, variables that we need uh, to connect tweets. And next, we need also provide our MongoDB uh, configuration. So 
those as a, a connection string that uh, to our MongoDB database. Uh, to find that one, we need to go to our uh, MongoDB uh, database, and we click connect. Uh, we say we want to connect with our Python. And let's copy this URL. So before we paste that one to um, a Lambda function, let's paste that one to a text file. Uh, the reason we need to, to do that is we need to fill in our password. So uh, for this password, that is um, Okay, and now we copy this string um, back to Lambda. And next, let's provide the geocode. Uh, so here you need to think about where you want to collect this from. So, so at the time that uh, when I recorded, I'm recording this video, so there is a second round of the election that in Atlanta. So I think I want to collect some tweets in Atlanta. So I opened the Google map and I click the downtown Atlanta and I copied uh, the latitude and longitude in downtown Atlanta and let's say we want to connect like, uh, in Atlanta uh, with a radius of 50 mile and uh, finally we need to define the cube parameter so what are the keywords uh, you want to connect about tweet in on Twitter, so I uh, say I want the election. All right, so those are the parameters that we need to define that in Lambda function. So those are the uh, variables that we should not uh, start in our Python code for security reasons. Let's save this one. And now it's time to uh, perform a test. So let's go to test. So let's create a new test. Say test. And let's save it. And now let's try this one. So let's test. And if everything goes well, and we have an error here. Uh, database name. Okay, I forgot the database name. Sorry. Uh, so here, uh, we also need a database name. So that is. Uh, how which database you want to create on your MongoDB cluster? So let's call it final project, and now let's save it. Okay, so now let's do this test one more time. And if everything goes well, and uh, yeah, so here we can see we have inserted uh, one hundred tweets, and now if we go to our uh, uh, MongoDB cluster, and we are seeing that the final project uh, database has been created. And beneath that, uh, there is a Twitter collection which has uh, about 100 tweets that talking about the uh, election in Atlanta. So, final project, 100 tweets, and those are tweets that are talking about uh, election in Atlanta. All right, so now let's define a trigger. So, let's add a trigger. Uh, so in this case, we want to connect this every five minutes, and of course you can uh, uh, connect this more frequent, but that, that will cost more money on a Lambda function, and also that will insert more data in your MongoDB database. Um, so let's choose the event bridge, and let's create a new role, let's call it every five minutes. And here, uh, let's use rate. That is five, five minutes. All right, and so it will create a collective run this code every five minutes. All right. So now we have created our first uh, Lambda function. So let's go ahead and let's create our second one. So now we have tweets that will be collected every five minutes. Our second function will perform sentiment analysis. Um, uh, on those connected tweets. So let's create our second function. And for this function, uh, let's call it sentiment tweets. And we are also using uh, Python. Uh, we are using the same 
I am role, the created live role. And now we are going to use a code that we downloaded from GitHub earlier. So the zip file and sentiment of tweets and we upload. Uh, so this will uh, read uh, the tweets um, from our database. Uh, in our case, it's a final project. And for each single tweet, we will check whether or not that tweet has been analyzed before or not. If that tweet has not been analyzed, then we will use uh, the AWS Comprehensive to detect the sentiment of the tweet text. And uh, for, and then we will retain the result. We will insert the result into the tweet document. We will insert uh, the sentimental, the detect sentiment, the positive score, negative score, the neutral score, and also mixed score. Okay, so that is our code. Uh, we also need to configure uh, this uh, function. So here, let's say we gave it uh, more memory storage and also longer timeout uh, because we're uh, uh, analyzing the data so like about 100 tweets so this time we will guarantee that we can uh, finish the work and uh, similarly we also need to define those variables so here uh, we also need to provide the mongodb connection which is uh, the same connection string and the database and uh, so we called the final project so we should give it uh, the same name and also language variable so uh, so you need to look at the tweets that you collected and see what language they're in so if your most of your tweets are in english and you just give that en uh, if your tweets in other language and you should provide uh, the right uh, language na uh, number, the code, because most are tweets in English, so we gave it en. So those are the three variables. And similarly, let's do a test. So let's create test. That is test, and we save it. And now we test our code. Uh, so that will uh, tell us that how many tweets being processed. Okay, we don't have any errors. Uh, and here, because we have processed 100 tweets, and now if we go back to our MongoDB uh, database, let's say if we refresh, and now we can see that in our uh, database, uh, we have more information. We have, the, uh, so this tweet has been uh, analyzed uh, we have the mixed score, uh, negative score, neutral score, and also positive score. Uh, because the neutral score is the highest, so the sentiment of this single tweet is neutral. Uh, so if you're interested and you can read the content and see if those uh, ana analysis, uh, analysis are accurate. All right, uh, so now let's go ahead and let's create a dashboard that to display our uh, results. So let's go ahead and let's create charts. Um, go to charts and let's add a new dashboard. Uh, so we can call it uh, final project. Uh, if you like, you can also have your name or data source uh, of um, data or other descriptions that uh, you like. All right, uh, so now let's add a few charts uh, to show the result. So first, let's uh, choose a data source. So we choose the final project, which has uh, our uh, tweets that we collected. And our first chart will show the number of the tweets. So let's go to the number chart. And remember, because we want to show the data in the real time, so let's add a filter based on created ad. Uh, before adding that one, let's convert the created ad to the date format because that is the number of the tweets, the time that is being created. 
Let's also drag ID to this aggregation and let's choose count. So that shows a number of tweets. And uh, let's add a filter. We say we want from the past 30 minutes. So the number of tweets that in the past 30 minutes, uh, you can call it number of tweets and in the past 30 minutes. Okay, so you can see that the number of the tweets that uh, post in the past 30 minutes being collected. Okay, so that is a, a number chart. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add our second chart and we can keep using the same database. So this time we're going to use a line chart to show the number of tweets that collected uh, over time and also it will also show uh, the different sentiments. Uh, so let's say we create a line chart uh, where the aggregation is a count of the ID. And the one axis is the time. So let's use when the tweet has been created and based on the minute, because we, we want to show the number of tweets that over in the past one hour. So, and we are updating every five minutes. So let's choose a minute. Um, and finally, for the series, let's say the sentiment, we want to see that uh, the number of in different sentiment, and we can see we have negative, uh, neutral, and also positive. We also have a few tweets that are none. That means those are just being created, collected tweets that have not have not been uh, analyzed. We also want to add the same filter, so. Let's say we also want to see the tweets that in the past uh, 60 minutes. Okay. Um, and also you can say uh, past 60 minutes. Uh, we also notice that so we may need to customize uh, the labels, so for example, uh, this one, we can call it number of tweets. Okay, and uh, for the time, let's just show the hours. Okay, and let's also convert to our local time zone, which is uh, Eastern time zone. Okay, and now we can see uh, the tweets that passed in the past one hour, and that is our second tweet, uh, second chart. Uh, we can adjust the chart a little bit. Um, let's keep adding another chart. Uh, so this chart will be showing the the popular hashtags. Um, again, let's convert the created ad. Um, to the date format, and here we want to show the hashtags. So let's use the word cloud, and here we want to show the text of the hashtag, uh, which is unwind, and we also bring the text to show the color as well, and we bring ID count to show the size, and it, we can see that we don't have a lot of hashtags, so. Um, Let's also add a filter. So once a filter being added, so uh, previous, let's say relative in the past 60 minutes. Okay, we only have one hashtag. So let's call it popular hashtags. And in the past uh, 60 minutes, Okay, and now you can see there's only one uh, hashtag that in the uh, past like six minutes that been collected from our collected tweets. Uh, we also want to show a bar chart uh, to show the popular users. So we want to know who are the most popular active users. Again, we convert the uh, created ad and we find out the user dot name. 
So we find our username, we bring that one to the y-axis. And let's just show the top 10 user. And for the application, we bring the tweet ID, not to the user ID, again, tweet ID. And we use account. So we can see those are the top 10 users. Uh, let's also add a filter. So you want from the past uh, 30 minutes, so the top 10 users. All right, so we can see those are the user that uh, because that's just one hour, so uh, and those users just send out the one single tweet. Top tweet users in the past six minutes. Okay, so that is our uh, bar chart. Um, and our final um, chart actually is a table. So we also want, just in case that we want to read the, the tweets in detail. So let's also create a table. And where we want show the text of the tweets. So let's find our text of the tweets. And for the values, let's show the favorite account. So favorite count, let's show average. Uh, let's also choose the, their positive scores. Uh, let's see, average. Uh, and also the negative score. Uh, let's also give it the average. Okay, so that is tweet text and in the past uh, 60 minutes which means that we also need to uh, add this filter uh, to show the tweet set in the past uh, 60 minutes okay and uh, for this uh, Table. So let's also um, change the field a little bit. So for this one, we see that is tweet text. And let's, let's also wrap the text so that we can read the content of the text. Um, and for the mean value, favorite, let's just show the favorite. And uh, let's choose uh, favorite is integers. We don't need to show the decimal. Uh, for the positive score, let's just call it positive. And let's just show two decimals. Uh, for the negative scores, let's just show a negative. And let's give it uh, two decimal as well. So let's make this uh, chart a little bit narrow. Uh, and also another thing that is very nice is that you can also sort based on the number of the favorites. Okay, so let's save it. All right, and uh, now probably we need to uh, make the text a little smaller because we want to show the entire Okay, uh, I will make this bar chart smaller. Okay, uh, so you can see which tweets has the highest uh, average and also negative. Uh, we don't. We also don't want to show the uh, the total. So let's uncheck the total. All right. Okay. So that's perfect. All right. Uh, so finally, let's share this chart. So uh, we want to make this one to be public. We also want the data to be public. Okay. And now if we copy uh, this chart, and uh, let's check that one in the private mode. So if we can view the chart in the private mode, then anyone can view it. Um, so now you can see uh, at the time that it's recording, it's 4 p.m. So we have the tweets that just been sent out in uh, 3.55. Uh, you can see that 
you can also sort the values based on the positive score, uh, negative score, etc. We have those non-values because those are the fields that have just been collected and has not been processed yet. Uh, so we can also edit the auto refreshing rate. So let's say we want auto refresh every uh, five minutes. Okay. And they will be refreshing the page setting every five minutes. Okay. Um, if you want also a refresh now, you can also force refresh all the charts right now. So you will see the latest data. And in the meantime, if we go to our uh, Lambda functions, uh, if we go to monitor and also logs, and we will also be able to see um, the number of times that uh, in the past uh, few minutes that how many times that we have uh, executed those functions. So if we open that, it will bring us to the CloudWatch. Um, this monitors all the services on AWS. So if we go to log groups, and you can see here I have two groups. One is for the pack tweets, one is for sentimental analysis. Uh, so now I'm going to open those. Okay, and uh, and now you can open the logs. This is the collecting tweets. Yes, yeah, so we have 100 tweets in the second round. We have uh, zero to new tweets, two new tweets, two new tweets, zero tweets. So that has that has been executed uh, five times. Uh, if I open the sentiment analysis. Uh, you can see that we have 100 tweets, so uh, this one has not been executed yet. So let's see what. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, we didn't add a trigger for this sentiment analysis. Yeah, sorry, my bad. So let's add a trigger for this one. Uh, we should do this one before creating those charts. So we are going to go to event. And this time we can choose an existing one that is, let's say, every five minutes. Okay, and let's add. All right, and so now um, this um, function will be executed every five minutes. So sorry for that. So uh, let's do a test. So that let's see. Um, so this time we can see we have processed four tweets, so those are four new tweets that uh, we just processed, uh, we just collected in the, uh, in the past uh, 20 minutes. And now I believe if we force refresh, now you can see uh, we no longer have any uh, non-values because all the tweets we collected uh, have the sentimental uh, score. Okay. Uh, finally, so when you are happy, so uh, you don't want to keep this running all the time because um, Lambda functions are not free and also uh, MongoDB database. So if you keep inserting the data, uh, you will reach your free uh, storage limitation. So finally, let's say you are happy with your um, uh, project and you decide to delete your project. You can go to your Lambda function and you can check those two functions. And then you can delete. And those two functions will be deleted. Uh, if you want to delete your dashboard or database, uh, you can do that as well among the 